The heat equation is a fundamental differential equation, conducive to pretty pictures, widely applicable, and the subject of my dissertation. So what is the heat equation? Before we get into the math, I have a very difficult announcement to make. This is my final episode as the writer and host of Infinite Series. It's been an incredible experience. In the last year, we've learned a lot together about infinite chess, simplicial complexes hidden in your brain, quantum algorithms, and so much more. I love researching and writing about this fun math and talking to you all about it, within the videos and in the comments. You all, engaged, thoughtful, curious, are my favorite group of 150,000 collaborators. But after 44 episodes of Infinite Series, my dissertation is calling. It needs to be finished. So I'm going to submerge myself in research. Don't worry, I'm leaving the show in very capable hands. Four hands, in fact. At the end of this episode, I'll introduce you to the two new writers and hosts of Infinite Series. They're fantastic people with some really exciting mathematical ideas. But first, I'm gonna talk math. Since I'm leaving the show to work on my dissertation, I wanted to share a bit about the topic, the heat equation. Let's start with my favorite question to visualize. What does an idealized model of heat diffusion look like? Let's imagine a giant, endless, infinite sheet of metal. For mathematical convenience, overlay a grid. Now, imagine you light a very tiny and very powerful match directly underneath the origin, the point zero zero. This super special match instantaneously creates infinite heat at the origin and zero heat everywhere else. Immediately remove the match and watch the heat diffuse along the surface, radiating out from the origin. After a short period of time, most of the heat will be concentrated around the origin. It won't have traveled very far. Those points will be very warm and far away points will be very cool. So this is the graph of the distribution of heat. The height at each point x, y on the plane indicates how much heat is at that point. As time progresses, the heat will spread more evenly and the graph will flatten out. Because the heat is equally likely to move in each direction, the graph will always be radially symmetric, meaning that the function has a constant value on circles around the origin. It sort of looks like concentric circles. The graph sort of looks like a bell. It's the two-dimensional analog of the more familiar one-dimensional bell curve, aka the normal distribution. The tricky thing about this function, the one we're looking at the graph of, is that there are three variables at play, the time t and the location x, y. For a fixed time, like 10 seconds or 100 seconds, we can write a function in x, y that will produce a bell-shaped graph. But the function changes with time, so we have to include a parameter t for time. So the entire diffusion of heat over time is described by this slightly unruly looking function. Plug in a specific value for t and you get a function that describes the heat distribution at that time. What we've been talking about isn't actually the heat equation. It's a solution to the heat equation. The heat equation is a differential equation, which technically means that it's an equation involving derivatives or calculus. Don't worry if you're not familiar with calculus, we'll give intuitions and definitions for the heat equation that don't assume any prior calculus knowledge. Before we get to the heat equation specifically, there's one important feature of differential equations we need to cover, and it's best understood through an analogy. Think about the solve for x equations you probably learned about in high school algebra class. For example, the equation 3x plus 6 equals 8x plus 1 has the solution x equals 1. Or the equation x squared minus 2 equals 0 has two solutions, x equals negative the square root of 2 and x equals the positive square root of 2. Or 2x plus 1 is greater than 7 has infinitely many solutions, all x greater than 3. The unknown in these equations were always a number or multiple numbers. Now, the unknown in a differential equation is a function or several functions. Just as x squared minus two equals zero describes certain numbers, the square root of two and negative square root of two, a differential equation describes certain functions. This is the heat equation, which describes a certain type of function f. 
And given its name, we should expect those functions f that it describes to model heat diffusion. We want to figure out what those functions are. To start, let's break down the heat equation by examining the left-hand side and then the right-hand side. The left-hand side is the Laplacian of f. The triangle is called the Laplace operator. It's often written as an upside-down triangle squared, especially in physics, but that's just notation. Technically, it's defined as the second derivative with respect to x plus the second derivative with respect to y, but we're going to interpret it without using calculus. The Laplacian of f at a fixed point, for example, 1, 2, is the answer to the question, how much does f of 1, 2 differ on average from the values of f nearby 1, 2? In other words, for each point x, y that's close to 1, 2, compute f of x, y minus f of 1, 2. So it'll be positive if the function value at the neighbor point is bigger, and negative if the function value at the neighbor point is smaller. And then average over those nearby points, all those within a tiny circle. Let's use this function as an example. The points on the graph nearby this point are all much smaller than it. So the Laplacian is negative there. The points nearby this one are all much bigger than it, so the Laplacian is positive there. The points nearby this one are sometimes bigger and sometimes smaller than it. The average value of the neighboring points is equal to the function value at that point. So the Laplacian is zero. Now, the right side of the heat equation. It's the derivative with respect to time of our function f. Basically, it tells us how the function is changing over time at a specific point. The time derivative is a big positive number if the function is rapidly increasing, a small positive number if it's slightly increasing, and zero if it isn't changing. A negative time derivative means it's decreasing. For example, let's look at this function, which is changing in time like a seesaw, pivoting on a central point. At x equals 1 quarter, the value of the function is increasing. So the time derivative at x equals 1 quarter is positive. At x equals 3 quarters, the value of the function is decreasing. So the time derivative at x equals 3 quarters is negative. And at x equals 1 half, the value of the function doesn't change over time. So the time derivative at x equals 1 half is 0. Now, let's combine the left side and the right side. When are they equal? Let's first imagine that for some fixed time t and point x, y, they're equal to a big positive number. Since the left side, the Laplacian, is a big positive number, it means that the point x, y on the graph looks kind of like a valley. The average value of the function at neighboring points is much larger than the value of the function at x, y. Interpreted as a statement about heat, the point x, y is colder than its neighbors. Since the right side, the time derivative, is a big positive number, that means the value of the function at x, y is increasing rapidly. In other words, the point is becoming warmer. It's gaining heat. That should fit with your intuition about how heat diffuses. If a point is much colder than the surrounding points, the heat will flow from the neighbors to that point, warming it. Let's try the opposite. What if they're equal to a negative number? Well, the negative Laplacian tells us that the graph of the function at x, y looks sort of like a hill. The neighboring points are smaller, on average. And the negative time derivative tells us that the function is decreasing over time. In other words, x, y is warmer than the average of the nearby points, but it's getting cooler. Again, this should match your intuition of heat diffusing along a surface. The heat equation is describing a function which averages its value over time, sending heat from warm places to their neighboring cold places. That's exactly what the function in the beginning did, the one that started as an infinite spike and evolved to become flatter and flatter bell shapes. It's actually called the fundamental solution to the heat equation, essentially because it's a building block for other solutions, ones that start with different heat distributions. To be clear, this is an idealized model of heat diffusion. To apply it to a real-world engineering problem, one would need to account for the type and shape of material and a host of other physical constraints. But the heat equation and more general diffusion equations have applications across the sciences. 
There's a lot of great questions you can ask about solutions to the heat equation, on different surfaces or within different regions. Can we estimate the amount of heat? Like, how extreme can the ratio of heat at two nearby points be? Versions of these questions, especially when you consider the heat equation on the discrete grid instead of the continuous plane, are the subject of my dissertation research. So, before I move on to that and say goodbye to you all, I want to introduce the two new wonderful hosts of Infinite Series, Gabe perez Giz and Ty Danae Bradley. Hey everyone, my name is Ty Danae. I'm a mathematician and also creator of the blog Mathema. I'm very excited to join you here in Infinite Series and I can't wait for us to do some cool math. And I'm Gabe, the former host of PBS Space Time. I'm back. As you guys may know, I'm a physicist, so I'll be bringing more of a physics perspective to the topics we cover on this show. I think you'll dig it. And they'll see you next time on Infinite Series.